Oh, chair, listen today. Oh, my God. Lord, this video is a long time coming. You've been, that this thing has been in my spirit. Oh, the Lord got something to say. Now I'm going to try to deliver. Come on, Lord, help me. Help me today, God. Okay. <laughs> Jenkins back with another YouTube video. So in this video, I actually want to talk about how I don't need a man. Okay. And I know the title, it seems like this, I'm probably gonna be, you know, bashing the man and being like, I'm so independent. I don't need no man. Girl, listen, I can do everything by myself. Mm. No, it's actually not coming from that standpoint. This video is targeted to how I felt like I needed a man to feel complete. I felt like I needed a man to feel worthy, to feel loved. I needed him to, to, to give me that, you know? But over the years of spending time with myself and really learning to love myself, really learning to know myself, I have been delivered from the notion that I need a man. God has transformed me in my thought process and how I view myself. And now I no longer need a man to value me. I no longer need a man to love me. I love myself. I value myself. Okay, first off, I'm getting into the video. Before I actually get into the video, I just start rambling. Girl, bring it back, because we gotta let them know first. Before we actually get into the video, if you have not already, hit that subscribe button for your girl one time for the one time, okay? So yes, like I was saying, in the past, I had this whole view that if I was if I was talking to a man, let's start with that. If I was talking to somebody, my entire world revolved around whoever I was talking to or whoever the number of guys. You know, you know, back in the day, you had a little small team. I ain't, you know, I ain't gonna even boost the number. But back in college and stuff, your girls was talking to multiple people, and so that would always be my focus. Whoever I'm talking to was who I put all of my time into, my energy into. And if I wasn't talking to somebody, then I felt like something was wrong with me. I felt like, why, wait, hold on, I ain't, got no, I ain't talking to nobody, I ain't got no man, like what's, what's going on? But, like I said, over the years, I have realized that yes, there may be some amazing men in this world, you know, and I may be talking to somebody that is amazing or that I think is amazing, you know, cause there's amazing men and then there's men that, have, that try to trick you into thinking that they're amazing, but they low key just trash. <laughs> they just they just trash wrapped up in a bow. Okay, you get to know and be like, uh uh, hold on, you are not who you appear to be. Okay, so girl, I lost my train of thought. What was I? Saying? Yes, there are amazing men in this world, and there may be somebody amazing that you're talking to, whatever. But I have come to the realization of spending time with myself, loving myself, really learning myself, and I realized that I am amazing two take the two off okay take the two off i am amazing period i am worthy period i am loved period and i no longer need that validation from a man because i give that to myself that is something that i operate in i operate from a, a space of love i operate from a, a space of worthy i operate from a space of wholeness completeness I don't need a man to make me feel whole. I don't need a man to make me feel complete anymore. I am complete all by myself. And if we want to go a step further and get biblical, I'm complete with God alone. God has completed me. God has made me worthy. God loves me wholeheartedly. God has created me. He, he, I am fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. And if I, now that I know that, now that I wholeheartedly believe that about myself, if I date a man and he does not see that as well by what he says, by what he does, then we there's no there's nothing for us to talk about. There's no there that, that's the end. Like if you if you don't see how amazing I am, how beautiful I am, how worthy, how loved, all of that. If you don't see that in me and you don't treat me as such, you're not the one for me. And that's, that's literally in, the end of the conversation. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> that's not, I'm, I'm being dead serious because there used to be a time where I would let dudes treat me any kind of way just because I had him. 
okay? Or quote unquote had him or whatever. We was just talking. I would let him treat me in a kind of way because I had a man. <laughs> a girl got a man. We looking cute together. Like he fine. You know what I'm saying? All of this. He got a nice job, got a nice car, whatever. But now it is how does he treat me? Yes, he may have this resume, but how does he treat me? How does he treat others? Let's talk about that. What is his heart posture? I, I'm looking deeper than just the surface. Yes, I may have a man, but I need that to be a good man. Okay, I want a man, but I need him to be a good man. And I need him to be good in what he says and what he does and how he treats me. And if he's not willing to do that, then there's literally the end. Of, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> that's end story, period, next. Because you ain't it. And I wasn't like that. Back in the day, back in college and stuff, I was accepting any and everything just because I had somebody to talk to. But now I understand that wholeheartedly. I understand my value. I understand my worth. I understand everything that I bring to the table. I can, I can list everything that I know that I bring to the table. And if this guy does not see that and he's not bringing stuff to the table too, there is nothing for us to talk about. There's no reason for us to be even communicating. I'm at that point where I'm just like, listen, I am not casually dating a, a guy that I know is not the one for me. I'm not just talking, I'm just, I'm not just talking to just talk anymore. I'd rather be by myself. I'd rather love on myself. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather pour into myself than sit up in here and sacrifice my work just because I want to have somebody. Just so, for somebody to be there, just for somebody to go out with, go on some dates, text, be on social media with. No, I don't, my energy, my time is extremely valuable. I'm not putting my energy and time into something that's not even worth it. That's not even worth it. It's not even worth it. And I have also created, in my mind over the years, I've created boundaries. I've created boundaries. And I've created my non-negotiables. Because me knowing myself, me loving myself, me valuing myself, I know who is going to compliment me and who is not going to compliment me. So, for example... I'm not an argumentative person. I don't like to argue a lot. I don't like tense conversations. I don't like all of that, like, you know, tension. I don't like that. I don't like arguing with people or nothing like that. I'm quick to just be like, it ain't even that serious. Like, <laughs> you got it. Like, okay, that's fine. Like, I'm not, that's, that's who I've grown to over the years. Back in, you know, college and school, like, I argue with a dude all day, every day. Because I'm going to get my point across. But now I'm like, I don't have the energy to argue over trivial stuff. And so I don't argue now anymore. I don't, if you are, that's, that's a non-negotiable for me. If a guy likes to argue with me or with other people, to me, we're not going to work. That's what you're going to always irritate me because you arguing with everybody. You like to argue, pick and poke about every little thing with everybody. That's not going to work for me. That's not, we're not compatible. That's just the end of the story. That's actually some <laughs> I actually ran into somebody like that last year where I was just talking to him. See, this is the thing. I, when I talk to guys now, I listen. I, I listen to what they say. Back in the day, I was just talking. We just talking and talking. We shooting the shot, whatever. We're not shooting the shot, but you know, we just we just chopping it up, kiki and whatever. We just having a good time bonding. Ah, this is cute. You cute. You know, what you got going on? You know, okay, how was last night? Whatever, just talking and talking. But now we could talk to talk, but I'm I'm listening. I'm listening and I'm studying you low key, not like really like taking notes, but I'm just kind of going along with the conversation, trying to fill you out, see what kind of person you are. And so I was talking to this dude and we were talking about like politics and stuff. Cause I think this is when last year was when it was, was it that? It was last year. Yeah. Biden and um, Trump were running and stuff. And so I'm just giving an example. He's a Republican. The other people were Democrats. And so it was like him and all these Democrats that were in the room. And he was just saying how he was purposely, pur pur purposefully, Lord, I can't talk, saying stuff to make them mad, to poke at them and try to get a reaction and just doing all of that. And he was just laughing on the phone with me. And I was like, what? what? what's the point of that? And he was like, nah, I mean, ain't no point. I just, you know, it's just, it was just fun to me. So you are low-key setting fires. You low-key trying to argue with people for fun? Nah, 
not, bro. That's not, to me, that's not fun. To me, that's annoying. Like, if I was with him and he was poking at different people about politics, that would have highly annoyed me. I would have been very irritated. So, from listening to him say that, I was like, okay. That's, I was, I was taking notes. I was like, listen, that, that area were not compatible. So, let me, let me go ahead. And it was, it was that area and the whole thing that I'm celibate. And I wholeheartedly believe that the man that God has for me is either one going to be 100% celibate too, or he's going to support my celibacy and be a, and be like, hey, you know, I'm going to be celibate with you, whatever, you know. But the guy that I was talking to, the, he was very argumentative. He also didn't support my celibacy. He just was like, no, you know, if you come over, I can't say that I'm, you know, going to restrain myself and all this. And so that... That was the final. I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, that's the final straw. No, nope, you are temptation. The Lord said flee from temptation, so I need to flee from you because you are not supporting my celibacy decision and you're going to try to pull me in. So I was like, okay, so I had to let him go because of that. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like I wasn't always like this. I didn't always have my set non-negotiables. I didn't always have the boundaries that I set. And so when I say boundary, I feel like boundaries and actually non-negotiables could actually go hand in hand. So a boundary that I have set actually kind of, with me being celibate, a boundary that I've, I've set is I don't let men spend a night. That's a boundary that I set. I just created that earlier this year because last year I was, it was a pandemic. I was showing out people spend a night and I was like, you know what, listen, I'm about to follow, you know, I'm about to, I'm about to follow the, the celibacy train. So a boundary that I be setting, one of them is I don't let men spend the night because I don't want to, you know, fall into the temptation of me having sex or whatever. And so another boundary that I have would be over like my time and my energy. Okay. I set a boundary around it that I love peace. Now, granted, you know, it's always going to be some, some fluff and some stuff you got to deal with. But when it comes to men, I'm choosing peace. That's the boundary that I have set. Before this, I didn't have that boundary established. And like I said, I'll argue with a dude. I'll go back and forth with him. You know, we'll be on and off, all of that. But I don't do the back and forth with dudes anymore because I've set that boundary. That I'm choosing peace. I have a peace boundary. And if you are pushing up against my peace boundary, then sir, you are not the man for me. What, why am I sitting up here and, and, and move, remove my peace boundary and just have a headache with you constantly? Be always arguing with you, always into you, into you, into it with you. And we back and forth. You are not the man for me. If, we, if you're not showing me consistency and you are not showing me peace, that's the bound, that's that's a non-negotiable for me. That's the boundary that I'm setting. I'm not, you are not the man for me. Period. And another thing I felt like when I was dating in the past, I felt like I had like this dating skill, right? Let me see. I have came up with this, this analogy and I'm trying to see if I can explain it. So you have a skill, right? And you got weights on it. I would always place the guy on a higher skill than myself. So I was always trying to cater to him or, you know, just try to keep the peace or do whatever he wants to do just so I could have a man. But over the years, I feel like the scale has tipped. For me, at least I think I, it is tipped. I feel like I've placed myself on a higher scale than the man. I am no longer going to bend over backwards for a man, like I said, that does not value me and that does not treat me good. That's it. It's just very simple. If he does not treat me good and I know I'm worthy of something good and more, the scale, I'm, I'm placing myself higher. I am placing my wants and my needs and I'm just placing myself. I just know that I am an amazing person. person. And so I'm catering to myself first, my needs, my wants. As far as in, in a relationship, I'm not saying like, I'm just going to be like, I'm better than him. And I'll, you know, I'm, I'm not saying like, I'm looking down on him or nothing like that. No, I'm just saying that I'm placing myself first. I'm placing myself first. I, I'm realizing that I am the prize. I'm realizing that I am the good thing. The word of God says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. I am the good thing. I know that God has created me intentionally. 
I know that God has, like I said, he has completed me. Everything about me, God has ordained. God has orchestrated. And everything about me I love, of course, there are some things I want to change about myself just to be better. But I still believe I'm a good, pers good person. And I need the person that God has for me. I not need, I know the person that God has for me is going to see that very thing in me and more. He going to see more in me than I don't see in myself. And he going to treat me as such. But until then, until the man treats me as a good thing, he is not it for me. He is not getting my time. He is not getting anything from my energy, my strength. Nothing. He ain't even getting a second. He might get a second look if he's fine. But <laughs> if he's fine, I might do like a little double take or something. But he, I'm not entertaining him anymore. I'm not in, entertaining dudes like that just for fun no more. I'm being intentional about my dating life. And that's, that's really, honestly, the moral of this entire video is I want us to be intentional about our dating life and who we choose to entertain. And I want us to be intentional about the way that we view ourselves. You, Because I feel like that's where it all stems from, is how do you view yourself? And if I could speak to my younger self, Lord, I would tell her so much. I would tell her that she is created in God's image and she is the daughter of royalty. Our father is in heaven and he is king, which makes us daughters of royalty. I would tell her that she is loved, that she is valued. I would tell her that everything about her is beautiful every single thing even the thing that you really don't like about yourself is still beautiful because god created it specifically for you i will tell her that she's fearfully and wonderfully made and you know i looked up the definition of wonderfully made in the dictionary and i actually didn't notice but wonderfully made means that you are set apart and you are unique which means you are not ordinary and if you meet a man sis that is treating you like you're ordinary he ain't the one. I would tell her don't waste any of her time or energy on somebody who doesn't see that same uniqueness in you. Don't waste your time on somebody who don't see you the way God sees you. I will tell her that she is the prize. She is the good thing. Like I said earlier, the man who finds a wife finds the good thing. Sis, you are a good thing and you need to operate as such. You have the power. You establish your boundaries. Set your non-negotiables. This is your life, sis. You have that control. You have that power. You can make a decision on who you talk to and who you don't talk to. And I don't want you to ever feel like you trapped into a relationship or you trapped into a situationship with somebody that you're not even married to. Somebody you ain't even got no union with, no covenant with. Girl, if he ain't showing you, if he ain't giving you what you need, you need to get out and go the other way. Y'all ain't married and you need to create a list on what you will and will not accept from a man. And if you need some help with that list, girl, I got some things for you. Okay. Number one, do not entertain somebody who does not take you serious. Do not entertain somebody who does not take you serious. And don't entertain somebody who doesn't make you feel special. Who doesn't show you and tell you that you're special. And don't entertain. This is the last one. This, we need to write this down. Do not entertain somebody that God said no to. And everybody doesn't hear God audibly, but you can feel. You know, you know when God has told you to let that man go. You know when you feel uneasy when you're talking to somebody. That is God telling you to pull back, sis. Because this may not be the one. And you need to pay attention to that. Because God knows who you're talking to. We don't always know. Like I said, somebody can can appear to be amazing, but what's really going on? What's, what, what is their heart like? And we don't always see that, but God can, because God created me and he created him too. So if you date a man and, and everything seems perfect and everything seems good, but you feel something, you need to tap into that. You need to tap into that. That's probably God saying, hold on, sis, because I don't been bamboozled a number of times and I can tell you in each time, God made me feel uneasy about this person and I didn't know why.
until the end. <laughs> until I was hurt, until I was crying, until I was frustrated with how the whole situation, you know, ended up because he did me wrong. But God was saying to me from the beginning, La, this uneasiness, something, something you like, something is off. I, I will be like, something ain't, ain't adding up. I just kind of feel, you know, I feel a little, I feel like, you know, but he's showing me this and he's treating me like this and I feel like this. But on the inside, I felt something is, it's just a little something deep down. It's just in, my, in a pit of my stomach that I can't put my finger on. And at the end, I realized that was the Holy Spirit saying, hey, he's showing you one thing, but he's really another. And you need to, you need to tap into me so I can let you know when he is showing, when he, you know, when there's another side of him. And one more thing, don't get caught up in the superficial. Don't get caught up in what you see and, you know, what he does. And maybe if he got a little cloud on social media or something, don't get caught up in that. Look deep down. Look deep down in his heart. Like I said, when I was, when I listened to guys and I talked to them, I don't just talk to talk. I don't just listen to listen. I really process what they're saying because a lot of times if you listen to what a guy is saying to you about somebody else, to somebody else, whatever, if you just listen to him, you can tell his heart by his conversation. And so I want us to really tap into that. Let's look past the fineness, the tallness, whatever, you know, whatever that's, that's first initially drawing us to him. Let's look past that and, and see what is his heart posture. Is this really a good man? Is this really somebody that God would approve of me dating? And if it's a no, sis, cut it off. And if I could get biblical for a second, God has way too much for us to do to be wasting our time on trivial situations, to be wasting our time on people that God didn't even want us connected to. God got so much for us to do in his kingdom, but it's a number of his daughters that are distracted by these men that God didn't even say yes to. God didn't even say yes to. There's so much work to be done, but we're wasting our time in situations that are becoming distractions. I'm up here stuttering, can't even talk. Like, listen, enemy, you, I'm going to talk. Okay, we are up here, got, the enemy got us distracted and we are not able to fully do the Lord's will. And so I just want us to tap into our discernment when, when dealing with men. That's all I want. That's all I want with this whole video. Okay, well, that's really, listen, <laughs> that's all I got to say. I pray that something that I said, you know, blessed you. I pray that you feel loved and worthy and whole from just this whole conversation. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Bye.